Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of From Pain to Purpose with Eveline. I am so glad to have you guys tune in with me this morning, this evening, night, or whatever time you're watching this video. Thank you for taking your time to be here with me today. So, today is going to be a touchy subject. Yes, it's going to deal with something that we have all de dealt with at some point in our life. And if you say that you haven't, probably fine. Okay, so stay tuned because you don't want to miss this. So, today's topic, yes, is about dealing with jealousy and envy. Hmm, why do we Christians often deal with jealousy and envy? And I'm going to tackle that today with the word, with examples, personal life examples as well. Yeah, because I've been through that too. So first and foremost, I want to start with the regular, maybe definition of what jealousy is. Let's start there. All right, so jealous. Feeling or showing envy of someone or their achievements and advantages. We have synonyms like envy or envious, covetous, resentful, grudging, begrudging, desirous. Hmm. So when Moses got the Ten Commandments, God also put in the Ten Commandments something, a little something about jealousy. God gave Moses the Ten Commandments and the last one was in Exodus 20 chapter 17. It said, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servants, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Why did God give that commandment? Because he knew the heart of man. We're always seeking for more. We're never content with what he has given us or we're never uh, patient enough to receive what he will be giving to us. So we're always looking to, oh, I don't have that. I don't have that. I, I want what she has. I want what they have, especially with people who are the closest to us because we feel like because they are close to us, we should be quote unquote on the same level or to be honest, sometimes you feel like you should be maybe at a higher level because quote unquote, you think you're serving God better. That's not going to happen. God is not a God that shows favoritism. God is a God who is just and who works on what you need and what you deserve. Okay. So don't worry about what your neighbor got because we're always worried about somebody else's business. Okay. And one thing I want to say when it comes to being envious and jealous is that it's a root there. There's a root of that stems from maybe fear and insecurity and doubt. And a bit, little bit of, a lot of bit of faithlessness. Because if you're jealous of somebody else, it's because you don't believe. You have an insecurity within yourself that you cannot attain what they have. Or that you, that God has not, does not have something good for you as well. So now you're not believing, you don't have faith. You don't have faith that God will fulfill the promises that he made in your life. Or that you are afraid that you will not amount to much. And those are all contrary to what the word of God says. He knows he has, the, the word of God says that he has great plans for you plans to prosper you not to harm you he says that he will provide for all of your needs he is indeed Jehovah Jireh he will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory he says not to worry about tomorrow for tomorrow we will worry about itself he said he will he will provide for you he is a provider he says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you so why do we need or feel like we need to want what others have we need to understand and we need to, to grasp that God does not treat everybody the same. Wow, yeah, he does not. He does not show favoritism, but he doesn't treat everybody the same because he knows he knows the inner depths of our hearts and we he knows that what lies within the heart is not the same with everybody. That's why you see people who are very malicious and vindictive and resentful and you have people who don't hold grudges as much they just let it go the, the 
the content of the heart can only be judged by God because he sees it. And when I look at jealousy and envy, I think of the parable of the sower. Because God only blesses a good soil. Because he, whatever God blesses, whatever soil God blesses will multiply, would be fruitful. So he cannot bless a soil that is not good because it will multiply whatever that soil has. And when you look at the seeds that were um, on the on the path or the, the seeds that were growing among thorns and among uh, rocky grounds, if he were to multiply that, can you believe that? If you were to multiply those seeds or the content or, or, or the residue or the results of these seeds, they will be filled of what? Nothing next because the path was just, the enemy just came and stole whatever was in that person's heart anyways. So when the, the seeds grow amongst rocky grounds, the person was not rooted in God. If you bless someone immensely that is not rooted in God, they will further, you know, continue on that route. And God wants you to be rooted in him first and abide in him. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So he wants you to intimately know him and, and have a relationship with him so that he can bless you. The seeds that were growing amongst thorns, Though they were growing, they were growing among things that were choking the life out of them. Wealth, insecurities, fears, all of that comes and chokes the life out of you. And if God blesses that, you will turn away from him completely because you'll be too concerned about uh, 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 how to build up your wealth, how to be... Uh, uh, live a prestigious, famous life or whatever it is that the world has to offer as opposed to willingly accepting and, and, and wanting what he wants for you. So God will not bless a soil that is not good. So you have to understand that first. So if you're dealing with envy, if you're dealing with envy, it is not too late. We've all have dealt with envy before, okay? First, let's go to the Songs of Solomon chapter 8, verse 6. It says, place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is, a, for love is as strong as death. It's jealousy unyielding as the grave. Hmm. Jealousy as yielding, as unyielding as the grave. The spirit of jealousy is so strong, especially when it's unchecked by the Holy Spirit. It can cause you to then, ha then have the spirit of covetousness that you just want and desire strongly what somebody else has for you, completely dismissing what God wants from you. And you're willing to go through hell and back to get that. That means compromising who you are in Christ, compromising your character, uh -uh, doing things that God does not want you to do just because you desire something that will ultimately, ultimately, destroy you because it's not meant for you anyways i don't care what paul peter mary martha have if it's not what god wants for you it's not if it's not what god has for you it will destroy you that's why he hasn't given it to you yet okay so you have to understand that god is faithful and god is sovereign over everything that pertains to us so if he has not given it to you yet it's probably because you're not ready to have it yet or it's probably because it's not meant for you to have he has something completely different for you so you have to hold on to that and wait on him another verse that i want to talk about is in psalms 37 verses 1 to 3 psalm 37 verses 1 to 3 it says do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong for like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. And take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Take delight in the Lord first. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. In order for us to be able able to combat the spirit of of jealousy and envy we have to trust in the lord trust in the lord lean not on your own understanding in all of your ways acknowledge him so that can, he can make your path straight and not filled with jealousy you have to trust that he has something good for you no matter how long it takes enjoy what he's given you now enjoy be content in what he's giving you now enjoy the pasture delight yourself in him even if you don't have the expensive clothes the cars the house you have him 
it's something that you should be delighted about. Like you get to commune with God, you get to to receive from Him and and and, and absorb His revelation, His divine rima every day. That within itself is a treasure. Rejoice in that. It says, do not be, do not fret because of those who are evil or envious of those who do wrong. Aren't we often envious of people out there in the world who would live this prestigious lifestyle, this glamorous life that lifestyle, this luxurious lifestyle? It was like, why? we're always like, oh, especially because of social media, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, all of that now TikToks and stuff. You tend to want what they have. You're like, man, I want a big house like that. Man, I want, I want a, 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 a good-looking husband, a good-looking wife like that. I want these expensive shoes, these expensive clothes, bags and stuff. I want that. I want that. Now you're coveting what your neighbor has. And God told us in Exodus 20, chapter 7, and I'm Exodus 20, verses 17, not to covet, not to want what anybody else has. Not your your neighbor's male donkey, not his wife, not his things, not to covet that because he has something for you be content with what he has for you instead of looking at what the world has and one thing the the verse also also says is that the, not be envious of wrongdoers that means people who do not believe or follow the uh, the do not believe in god or follow his will or follow his his path or obey his commands it says for like grass that will wither like green plants that will soon die away you're like, you're envious of someone out there in the world who does not know Jesus, who does not share the faith that you have. Do you know what the, the end of that person is? You're envious of someone who might go to hell. Let's be serious. We have to understand as believers that the life that we have here is temporary. Those 80, maybe 100 years max are temporary. They're they're minuscule. They're so small compared to the life that we will live in eternity with, with, with God in Christ Jesus. It's like I always uh, allude to this. It's like a drop of water in like the ocean. Like it's a drop of water in the ocean compared to eternity. That it, it's, it's our life here. That's what it represents. And we're, as, as human beings, we're um, willing to sacrifice anything for that. For that small amount of time we have here because we feel like you know you only live live once and that is not a biblical uh statement you don't live once <laughs> you know when you die that's when life actually starts so you have to be very careful of how you let um envy and jealousy creep creep in your heart and how you let it grow because we all experience jealousy and i'm going to talk about my own personal experiences uh, on how I fight jealousy and envy every single day because every single day we're exposed to people who have more than us we're exposed to people who may, might have a life that we probably want for ourselves. So you have to fight it every day. It's not something that comes sporadically Oh, because you see something that you want every day. So you have to be like, okay, intentional about what God has for you. But I want to go first to James 3 verses 14 to 16 and it's going to talk to us about how to deal with jealousy but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not boast about it and deny or deny the truth such wisdom does not come down from heaven but it's earthly unspiritual demonic for where you have envy and selfish ambition. There you find disorder and every evil practice. Wow. Every evil practice stems from envy and selfish ambition. And you've been greed because you want more than what God has for you right now. And we know that he is a God that rewards and that blesses. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or even think. He always has a plan and the plan that he has for you is greater. But before, like I said before, he cannot bless a soil that is not good. So that he, that's why he wants to mold and prune and build your character so that he can then bless you. Because he knows that now you've become uh, a source, a resource that he can use for his kingdom. Because you will not... Uh, abuse or forget to steward well what he has given you 
And what I really like about the verse, it says, but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. There are two sides to the coin. Sometimes you boast about it. And you say, how? By speaking out to other people about what other people have. And you kind of like tell on yourself a little bit. Saying, man, I wish I had that. She doesn't even deserve that. You see what she be doing? How can God be blessing her like this? God probably should be blessing me with all the things that I'm doing. Do you really think that by talking like that, God is going to bless and multiply the soil that is coming from your heart right now? Because the word of God says that out of the abundance of uh, the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're full of something, your mouth will speak it. And God is very clear about that. And it also says, which I love, do not deny the truth. Do not deny that you have envy and jealousy in your heart. Acknowledge it, become aware of it, and say, Holy Spirit, this is something that I have, and I do not want to walk in it. I do not want it to abide in me. Help me get rid of this. Help me focus on the things that you want me to focus on, according to Philippians 4, 8, whatever is trustworthy, good, of lovely report. Help me to focus on these things. And not focus on my, my neighbor's grass, but help me to focus on the grass that you have given me right here. Because Jesus doesn't like jealousy. And you can tell with Peter and John, there's a little bit of jealousy there. Because Peter, Peter was like, man, he I think that there was some type of thing that Peter wanted out of the relationship that John had with Jesus. Because they were so close. Um, but Peter never, he probably did, but... When you focus on somebody else's relationship, you cannot work on your personal relationship with that person. And I think that when Jesus told Peter what he was going to do for him, Peter went straight to John's wrath and be like, what about him though? He's like, what is that to you? If I want to keep him alive until I come back, what is that to you? Don't worry about that. Worry about what I got going on with you right now. Worry about the assignments that I have for you. Don't worry about what I got for John. And that's what God wants from us. And for me, how I deal with jealousy, I check it. As soon as I see it creep in my heart, I check it. And you see, you know how I know jealousy is there? When you scroll down a line and you see something and you become immediately angry. You're like, uh, you're, I'm like, what? Where is this coming from? This anger. Or when a friend shares a good news with you, you, you there's something with you that... That's, that tends us up like, oh, why can I have this right now? Why can't it be me? So when you see that surging, you're like, oh, there it is. It's trying to creep in. Do the exact opposite of what your flesh is telling you to do right now. Because when you scroll down the, your timeline or whatever, and you see something, uh, maybe some good news from a friend, you, and you get upset, you want to scroll past and be like, <laughs> Or get upset do the opposite compliment them congratulate them and say i'm so happy from for what god is doing in you right now and when you're done say to yourself god i believe in i trust in you and you have something great for me as well and i cannot wait for what you have in source for me say, but thank you for blessing my sister and brother and whatever they're having right now and every time that you practice that your heart will grow your character will be built and God's like, yes, I can trust her. Because not only is she not letting jealousy and envy abide in her heart, she's aware that it's there sometimes and she can, or he can cast it to the side. Jealousy will come. But you, in order to combat that and fight that, you have to know that God has some, something great for you too. It may not look like him. It may not look like hers. But... It may like look like his or look like hers, but he has something great for you too. And something that you need, something that you deserve, something that's going to be good for you and not something that is going to destroy you. Because the enemy wants to give you what's going to destroy you. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy what God has for you. But God wants to give you life and, and, and life abundantly. That's what he wants for you. So don't think for one second that God doesn't have great plans for you. He does. He does. But whenever you feel jealousy coming in and his first start with that that little tense moment and that anger that sprouts up, like, oh, why her? Fight it off. Say, nope. 
get the behind me Satan I'm going to rejoice with my brother and sister I'm going to compliment them I'm going to congratulate them because I know God is doing something great in their life and he is a God that does not show favoritism he is a diligent rewarder so he will reward me too at one point and I'm going to be content in whatever I have right now that's how you fight um, envy and, and, and jealousy and not want to covet what somebody else has do the exact opposite of what your flesh is telling you to do right now, to be angry or, or be resentful or be desirous of something that they have. Another verse that I want to talk about is Philipp Philippians 2, 3. It says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the other person. So if you're putting that person's interest before yours, and you're not moving out of vain conceit and selfish ambition, then you're more likely to cast jealousy aside because you're like, okay, I want I want my, my, my brother and sister to, to prosper. I want what's best for them too. I want them to succeed. I want them to, to, to do well. And when you think that way, you're not like concerned about what about me but what about what god has for me what about what about what about me god's like don't worry about that i got you because when you put somebody else's needs above yours and you cater to that god is like i got something great for you too and he will bless you because he sees what you do i'm a sunday school teacher and and i tend to to see different dynamics in my classroom but I have to be honest that when I see a child catering to somebody else's needs above theirs, like I have an assignment and they're worried about, well, let me help him with his assignment. They're working on theirs too, but they're like, oh, I, I want to help. I want to help uh, Missy. Can I help you with this? Or can I help this person with this? I'm like, oh, they're, they're, they're worried about their friends and, and they're putting their friends' needs above their own. And I reward that all the time. I'm like, okay, I'm going to give you a, a little extra candy. They're like, oh, thank you, Miss E. Because I'm like, yo, that was so kind of you. Not only do you trust in my ability to take care of your need, and that's why you're, you're willing to go out there and take care of other people's needs, but you're doing it with a kind and humble heart. And I always reward that in my class. I am so flawed in so many aspects. But yet, I still find the time to do that for my kids in my class. How much more God, the maker of heavens and the earth, the one that owns the cattle on a thousand hills, he, he is all in all. How much more him? So trust and believe that God has something great for you. Do not let envy uh -uh, sow a seed in your heart. Do not let it, do not let that seed grow to become a full grown tree to the point that you're not resentful and, and, and angry and prideful and you don't want people to succeed. Don't let that happen. As soon as you see it, like I told you the first signs, that anger, that that tense up, that like that little prickling in your heart that happens when you see somebody or you hear somebody have something that you feel like you should have, do the opposite. Congratulate them. Be happy for them. And, and, and have a little prayer to yourself that God, I'm happy for them. And I'm not gonna let jealousy come into my heart even when I felt it a little bit right now. Remove that out of my heart and I believe that you have something great for me too. All right. Okay, guys. I know it was a little bit loaded today, but jealousy is so freaking fragrant in the body of Christ and we need to tackle it. We need to deal with it because it is it is real y'all it is real y'all okay and according to james 3 like we read before uh in verses 6 it says that for where you have envy and selfish ambition then you find disorder and every evil practice so there's a lot of evil practice that's going on in the body of christ stems from envy and jealousy so it's a strong spirit that we have to deal with and deal with it fast and the best way to deal with it is to deal with it as soon as you feel it. Don't let it sit there and, and marinate. As soon as you feel it, deal with it. Okay? 
thank you so much guys for tuning in today i hope this message blessed you please um share it with other people uh, so that it can bless them as well like the video subscribe to my channel if you're willing to it is not a must but it will be greatly appreciated uh, like i always tell you i always leave my church information below we're in the dmv area um, most precisely Montgomery village please come and join us and fellowship with us we'll be so happy to have you in the house my guys <sighs> take a deep breather it's okay been jealous before we've all been jealous before God will work on you. That's why he's here for to help us. The Holy Spirit is here to help us deal with these things and he will deal with it accordingly. Just avail yourself to him and he will wash you away of every ungodliness. Okay? I love you and I mean it. See you next time. Bye-bye.